Good people YouTube, I'm the watch idiot. So I've been wanting to do a video on vintage watches uh, before and actually this week, Worn and Wound put out an article on birthier watches and Zach Kazan, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, the author touched on a few points that reminded me of why I don't buy vintage watches. So I think that there's a difference between liking vintage watches and not wanting to buy them. And I think that applies to a lot of things in the watch world. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like them a lot. I like the stories behind them and I like learning about them and the history of that watch and of that brand that's connected to the watch. I mean, it's, it's awesome also to see a watch as a relic of its time. So yeah, all that to me is awesome. But would I actually buy a vintage watch now? Probably not. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the practical and physical reasons and also some of the emotional reasons why I tend to stay away from buying vintage watches and why it's okay to not be a vintage watch person. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So the big thing is that in order for me to buy a vintage watch, I'll need to really connect with it on many levels, design, ethos, what it means, everything like that, because of all the potential physical and practical downsides to owning a vintage watch. I like the look of many vintage watches. I like the designs, the sizes, proportions of uh, them, you know, quite a lot. And in many ways, vintage watches, they're pretty much spot on, but these are vintage watches and vintage watches are old and turns out that most things that are old, I mean, can be quite damaged as it turns out. So uh, yeah that can cost you a lot of money uh, to just to, to fix and bring it up to working order or just simply to maintain it aesthetically i'm okay with you know signs of wear on vintage watches and i actually want to get my personal keeper watches more scratched up because then it looks like I, it's lived a life but that life is my life and the scratches have a point to them i mean on random vintage watches unless i know the exact story of a watch but have no connection to why it looks so I mean, damaged pretty much, and, and it makes it tough to potentially pour in a big money into it. So while I can really appreciate the stories and the reasons, say, behind a, you know, tropical dial, I just happen to think they look absolutely terrible and cr uh, crumbled. And crumbled loom just looks damaged to me. And to, to put it really bluntly, I mean, sometimes patina is patina, but there are many times that patina it's just damage, honestly. So yeah, since I like the aesthetics of vintage watches and yeah, I would want to find one that makes me feel like I've gone back into time to buy one brand new so that I can make my own story with them. But yeah, that's obviously very pricey. <laughs> and on the practical side of things, I mentioned a couple times before, but maintenance and repair bills can get crazy. And I don't think I would want to spend another watch's worth of money on the same vintage watch unless there's something very special about that watch. And that's also down to my collecting style and wearing habits. I mean, I like having a selection to choose from and experiencing a bunch of new watches. And yeah, so basically every $500 bill or every hundred plus dollar repair bill, I would just think of all the watches that I could have gotten for that money that has now just been pretty much sunk into a watch uh, that might not even be fully fixed yet. And on top of that, I actually want to wear my watch just doing whatever I'm doing. And in most situations, I would want the watch on my wrist to be there with me, you know, to get scratched up and to get wet, whatever it may be. So I might end up skipping whatever vintage watch I have just because I wouldn't want to break it and uh, spend even more money just getting to fix it. Because in the end, it's just a fact that modern watches are going to be more reliable and robust overall. I mean, I would need like a fully beautifully restored vintage diver to possibly make it work. Oh, and that's why reissues and things like that are very nice for me. Many of the same problems come with vintage cars. And yeah, while I'm unlikely to buy a vintage car just because I wouldn't want to potentially spend an ungodly amount of money just to keep it running and fix it and all that stuff, which could be part of the experience, I suppose. And also the fact that I literally just don't have the money to buy a vintage car or whatever it may be. I am though more likely to buy a vintage car before a vintage watch, just because a vintage car is a complete experience. I mean, you get to feel the steering, you feel, you know, just like the vibrations and feeling of the, of the road under you, the suspension, how it reacts, and then the experience of powertrain and the unique exhaust note 
of that car. So yeah, as much as I love watches, I think at this point, watches are my number one love and cars would be right over here. Watches just simply can't offer that sort of complete and all encompassing experience, which isn't watches fault. And it's not a bad thing at all, just because they're just two very different things with very different plus points and negative points. But in the end, it's just something that I can't bank on with a vintage watch uh, to you know justify all the money that's being put into it so yeah i mean the the experience of a vintage watch can still be absolutely amazing and unique but given all the extra issues that it can bring about it just makes it a bit of a tougher sell so one thing to note is that i'm a full-on empath and i also tend to anthropomorphize things quite a bit so that obviously applies very much to watches and this also apply, uh, plays a big role in you know how i think about random vintage watches with their kind of unknown histories so the idea of wearing some unknown person's watch from before i was even born is slightly creepy to me because watches are extremely personal items at least to me and i'm sure to many of us out there uh yeah a watch is pretty much the only thing that we own that can be with us 24 7 365 days a year and not only be with us but like right on our physical body i mean like i don't know what could possibly be more personal than that so you know that being said if i buy a random vintage watch that hasn't been passed down or without a clear provenance i mean i have no idea what that watch is been through i mean it could have gone through wonderful times sure but it could also be connected to you know not so great times like maybe it was a super precious watch to someone but then they had to sell it because their entire life collapsed and maybe it was just on the wrist of a just an awful person who did terrible things to the people around him so yeah i mean yeah all those things are possible so to think that i'm living with it like right on my wrist and it's looking at me all the time I don't know it's just it's, it's it's a bit too much for me yeah uh not sure how many people feel this way but you know let me know in the comments if you do think of it this way yeah and also in the end i want to wear a watch that's mine a watch that's living its life alongside my life i want to create memories with it that are mine i really do see my, my watches as little friends who are always there with me. So when I look down at my watch, I wanna be reminded of my own memories with the watch and I don't want it to remind me of something else. So yeah, and, and also if I don't know what memories a random vintage watch has, then you know, why should I be connected to it other than obviously the, the design and the watch itself? So yeah, I mean, I can wax lyrically about you know what it might have been through and you know the stories it might, be, might hold and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, in the end, but we just don't know. Yeah, at the moment, there's so much fervor around vintage watches, you know, and auctions and things like that. And, you know, like anything else, I mean, not liking something that seemingly everyone likes can be a bit off-putting to anyone, especially to someone who's new to the hobby. And that's totally fine. So I see vintage watches as just another part of the watch world, another type of watch in a way. I mean, kind of like, you know, dive watches and chronographs. I mean, some people are full-on dive watch guys like myself and some are full-on chronograph or dress watch nuts or whatever it may be and then there are you know some folks who are just full-on vintage watch people so like anything else in the watch world it's a it's totally possible to appreciate things you know from afar and appreciate them without having to like them enough to buy one so i absolutely love chronographs i love the look and the functionality and just their awesome designs and just everything about them but i'm not a big enough fan to buy any more of them i mean i love my speedy and my other quartz chronographs but i don't feel the need to just buy any more same thing goes for you know vintage watches just because you don't like them doesn't make you any less of a watch nut and it doesn't mean that you still can't appreciate what they're all about so yeah as with anything uh, I would just say don't rule out any watch or type of watch before understanding them and, you know, potentially, you know, trying it on uh, for yourself and seeing what's what. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about vintage watches. If you like them, if you don't, why you like them or don't like them, why you think that way. And yeah, all that good stuff. And yeah, of course, hit the like button and subscribe button and all the good buttons to help the channel grow for free, as it turns out. So uh, yeah, until the next video, good day.